You're watching Tim Topham TV, the piano teaching podcast, and this is episode number 38. Hi everyone, and thanks so much for watching this episode of Tim Topham TV, where we're getting started with summer camp month uh, on the blog and the podcast, and we're going to be chatting to Jennifer Fox, someone who knows all about this stuff, and I can't wait to get into our discussion to get you um, into a position where you can get started running your own camps if you've never done it before, or if you've already started, perhaps giving you some new ideas about how you can take it to the next level. Now, before we dive in, I would like to thank today's sponsor which is Make More, Teach Less, the online summer camp training program by the fantastic Jennifer Fox, our guest today, of musiceducatorresources.com. Jennifer and I have been friends online for years now, and I've always admired her blog posts and teaching ideas. So when I heard that she'd created an online training course for piano teachers all about running summer camps, I simply had to find out more. Now, Jennifer, Jennifer's course takes you through the process of running your first or improving your current summer camps literally from start to finish logistics, scheduling, marketing, what activities to actually do, literally everything you need to know. I really like her do's and don'ts section too, which will help you avoid making those mistakes that you might otherwise make if you've never done this kind of thing before. It comes with nine video modules, which you can follow at your own pace, and it comes with handouts and downloads and a whole heap of bonuses. In fact, there's just as, about as many bonuses are there are, as there are modules. I was really impressed. So if you're interested to find out more, check it out at timtopham.com forward slash summer hyphen camp or summer dash camp for those guys in America. All right, now today's show notes are going to be over at timtopham.com forward slash episode 38. And as usual, if you have a spare few minutes and you're enjoying these podcasts, I would love for you to leave a review over at timtopham.com forward slash iTunes. That's where you'll find all the instructions as to how to go about that. Okay, so my guest today, she's been waiting patiently. Jennifer Fox began her music education at eight years old when she began taking piano lessons, which is exactly the same time, Jennifer, as when I started piano lessons. There you go. <laughs> she began teaching piano lessons herself at age 15, later studying to be an elementary school teacher, and then ultimately deciding to teach piano lessons full time. She has over 20 years experience holding summer camps, group lessons, and having a music lab in the studio. So she's been doing this for a while. She's helped, uh, she has a lot of helpful information to share. A piano teacher, blogger, music education resource and curriculum developer, Jennifer Fox loves to share her resources, teach and connect with music educators from all around the world. Jennifer, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> all right, so before we get started, we've given a quick overview. You've got about 20 years of experience in the summer camp uh, kind of area, and that's what we're talking about today. So can you give us all an idea of how you actually got started with that um, and how often you do them and that sort of thing? Okay. Um, well, I got started mostly because I, there was a need. <laughs> I, I couldn't do everything in the lesson that I wanted to. There's just so many things that we can do with students. And um, my main reason for even looking into doing camps was to fill in those needs that I wanted to do. Uh, with them and so it allowed me to do more outside the typical lesson format um, thing and, and um, then uh, I do at camps actually twice a year so I'll, I'll, I'll guess I talk a little bit about that later on but sure. I'll do them in the summer and in the winter right okay so for you getting started with summer camps was more about finding time for interesting activities Mm -hmm. then that's how it started yeah okay so what what um we'll, we'll go into a little bit more detail but just a quick couple of activities that you find you can't do in a normal lesson but summer camps are perfect for well it was th different things like um learning how to compose and um learning how to le read lead sheets all that stuff can be done in the lesson but we're just so limited on time where a camp atmosphere we could really dive into it and everybody's there you know you can teach it all at the same time <laughs> yeah yeah and and without you know distractions and having to go home right. and not see them for another week you can see them i guess daily if you if, if you if that's how you set it up Right. Yeah, so the continuity is there. Yeah, no, that's great. Um, all right, so for, look, people, we've got viewers all around the world, and the American summer camp uh, idea is very particular to your country, but the things that we're talking about are obviously useful to any um, jurisdiction that has school holidays, which is everywhere in the world. So can you just tell us what do we actually mean by a summer camp and, and how can that relate to 
places that don't actually have this concept of a summer camp? Okay. First, the word camp does get confusing because the first thing you think of is overnight camps. Yes, and tents. <laughs> and even, right, and tents. <laughs> Outdoor adventures and all that kind of stuff. Um, my students, actually, some of them, the little ones, will be like thinking they're going to spend the night at my house. <laughs> you know, so I have to explain to them, no, it's not like that kind of camp. So I like to liken them like basically they're longer workshops that are held for more than one day for at least a couple hours each day so that's a good way to explain what they are okay so it's more we use the term summer camp because it's an activity that children do at that time of the year in america at in right. summertime right yeah um mm -hmm. and, I, and i know that some some people do run overnight things i've certainly read about them but i think uh -huh. for the majority vast majority of people and particularly those getting started it's really a daytime few hours each day for a series of days is that right? right? right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. So do you think the approaches that we're going to talk about and the activities and things, are they really only for us a holiday period or could you potentially use them at other times during the year or does it really need to be in blocks? Um, well, camps specifically work well when you're on some kind of holiday just because there are longer periods of time versus a group lesson. Mm -hmm. um, but with camps, I actually, I do hold it in the summer and I hold it in December when we have Christmas because Christmas is a crazy month. That whole month is just crazy. Everybody wants to, you know, there's all these family activities to do and stuff. And I used to get so frustrated because students wouldn't be practicing very much in December and everybody was everywhere. And it was just a great, you know, just crazy holiday mm. month. And you want to enjoy the holidays as well. And so my, I always try to find win-wins in my studio. So my win-win was to do a Christmas camp as well. Right. So that's, so we do it in the summer and at Christmas uh, uh, in December. And so was that just after Christmas Day or after New Year's Day? It's what we do is I hold it the first two weeks in December and then they have the rest of the month off. So then okay. they can just, uh, they enjoy Christmas. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, for us over here, well, our Christmas holidays are our, are our longest holidays and they're in uh -huh. summer. Um, yep. So that's our summer camp time, I guess. Um, yeah. But we, we would be... Mostly the kids are off all of January, so that would be our summer camp okay. time, I guess. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's what I would do is usually yeah. when you have a holiday. Yeah. Fantastic. All right. So I've got to ask this question. I quite enjoy my holidays, Jennifer. Um, <laughs> so the question is, we've talked about, yes, it's great for, summer camps are great for this continuity of learning something different. Are there other benefits to teachers in their studios for running these camps because it's you know it's a it's obviously going to be a fair bit of work the first time you do it it's going to take some time you're losing a bit of holiday time can you just kind of give list some of those key benefits so teachers are going uh, yeah that makes sense mm -hmm. well the first benefit is i like my holidays too <laughs> so that's exactly why i like to do summer camps is because um it allows me to have a break i need I think one thing that helps me keep from burning out as a teacher is I take plenty of breaks. And so it allows me to have a break and my students a break. And I see that it helps them as well from burning out on lessons. They want to come come back because they were able to, you know, rejuvenate, you know, through the summer. Um, but I also like to be paid. <laughs> so, like money. so camp allows me to not lose my regular summer income. I actually charge what I would charge two months worth of lessons for, for their camp session. And so I get my six, seven week break, but I'm not losing any income during that break. So, right. and you can't, you can't think of it like, oh, I get a free break because no, it's not a free break. I worked for it. I, you know, planned that mm. camp. And that, it is hard work. I just did it in a shorter period of time. So, wow. So that's, so you take, so let's say if the students were going to come for two months, of mm -hmm. July and August for you, I think it is. Would it be July, August? Is, for, is that a break well, normally? Yeah, July, actually it's June and July for me. Okay, so, so let's yeah. say the students would normally not be there for two months. So you're mm -hmm. saying if you were to come for your normal lessons, that total cost there, that's what I'm going to charge you. However, mm -hmm. you're actually going to only come for, is it a week or five days? It's, what, is, what do you do? Yeah, it's in about eight to nine hours total Okay. for the camp. 
So the, so it's actually, I mean, that's that's a legitimate income earner, um, as you say, which yeah. although, yes, it's going to take a lot of planning, it means you're working hard for the lead up to it for the week of the camp and then you get to have your seven weeks off right. and still get paid effectively, mm-hmm. which is a very savvy business decision in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. That's, why, that's why I love the fact that your course is titled make more teach less Um, (laughs) and and i'm always um i always like reminding teachers that it's okay to make money from what we do we are you know we spend hours and hours practicing and teaching and getting better and going to conferences and stuff it's okay to say you know what i'm going to charge a decent amount for this and i'm going to give the students an incredible experience but you know it's okay would you agree with that yeah. Oh, yeah. So, so sometimes they think uh, it's looked at as, oh, you're taking advantage of them or, you know, that kind of thing. And that's not at all what it is. You know, they're getting what they paid for just in a not traditional way. Yeah. 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 It's a win-win. <laughs> let's face it. It is. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get into the detail now because this is what I'm really interested in. And I know people are very keen. How do you get started? Let's talk about the first ever camp. If you can kind of take us back 20 years <laughs> how you know? How do you decide what what to what to do? Okay, well, if you're brand new and never done this before, I would highly recommend purchasing your first camp lesson plan and maybe even a couple. You know, for the first two or three years, I did this when I was first starting out, and it made me feel so much more comfortable in the whole process. I felt like I was starting on the right foot for sure. I think if I started from scratch, I you know, it would, it would be a little bit more stressful. So purchasing your own lesson plan gives you a safety net, so to speak. So um, where do people go for these kind of lesson plans? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, my first camps that I bought, um, I bought them. Bonnie Slaughter is the author. Um, she did a series called Music Camp Expeditions, and you can find those on musicedmarket.com. Mm-hmm. And then I've also used Cheryl Wells. She does really good camps um, as well. And then Theory Times, Theory Time with Heather um, has she has some camps that I've done. Her camps are actually really well for if you're going to do partner up with other teachers. It lends itself for that situation where you can do a huge camp. But if you don't have that, which I didn't, you can condense it to your own your own studio. So she has some good camps out there too. So those okay. are the main three that I would recommend. Okay, so musiceducatorresources.com. Um, well, I, that was the that first was one. Me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, that's you. That's, sorry. Yeah. That- <laughs> But actually, I do have a couple of there too as well. No, no, but I'm thinking, see, look, I've got my business cards from MTNA and one of them was, I thought you, maybe you said Music Educator. It's Music Ed Market. Market. That's the one. Yeah. I, they had a booth at MTNA. That's okay, the one. Yeah. That's the yes, one you actually talked about. We'll get to, yeah. we'll get to your one later on, but that's, that's totally fine. Um, um, so it was that, it was Cheryl Wells and she's uh-huh. got a blog. I'll put the link in the show notes. And what was the last one? Fairy time. Fairy time. You know time. the fairy time theory book? She oh, has theory camps. time. Theory. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Theory. Great. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you've got the lesson plan. Um, so that that what is that 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 gives you sort of a day's activities to do with a group or what? Right. Right. It breaks down everything for you. It gives you the materials that you need, the activities, um, how long they typically take. So you could kind of plan out your day, how long you really need your camp to be, um, that kind of thing. So, yeah, once you have that figured out, um, you're going to want to start announcing it to parents once you have the, what I'm going to do, kind of figure that out first. <laughs> yep. Because then it's time to get your parents excited about it. And then you can also decide, is this particular camp one that I can open up to other students that have never played piano before, where it could be a good possibility to, you know, get new students. I actually... Um, for a bunch of years, I did an intro to piano camp as a separate camp for that reason, to get students in the door for fall. Right. Okay. So that's really okay. good. Yeah. So you want to start advertising and get those dates out there because everybody, you know, those dates fill up fast. And um, So how soon in then, advance should they do that? I do it. I start 
putting the bug in my parents' ear about February. And then March is when I give all the details. Okay. And then my deadline for them to register to get their dates, because I, I have several sessions they could choose from. So my deadline is actually coming up on the 15th because they want to know when they're going to have it. Yep. So. <laughs> yeah, well, you, and, then, and, you, and you want confirmation of how many you're going to get and parents want to know what they're doing on the holidays. Makes right. Yep. Right, yeah. Is, is another... Sorry, go okay. on. <laughs> okay, sorry. <laughs> um, I personally don't give it as an option for for my studio. They, If they want to continue in the fall, it's a requirement that they participate in camp. Oh, okay. So yeah. it allows me also to see who's continuing as well. Um, I mean, I do a re-registration as well, but it's just kind of nice to see both sides. What um, percentage of students attend the camps then? It must be quite everyone, high. Yeah, yeah, everyone who wants to continue. Right. It's funny, if they don't, if they kind of like test it, <laughs> test it out. Mm -hmm. um, I've only in my, you know, time I've done camps, I could only remember one test, actually test that. And they ended up at the bottom of the way unless they had to wait a year before they could come back. So, <laughs> so, that, so they didn't come to the camp. You yeah. said, I'm sorry, you can't learn from me anymore. And they yeah, said, Yeah, they oh. were on the bottom of my waiting list. Wow. <laughs> Okay. Well, that's a lesson learned, I guess. Yeah, exactly. They learned from it and they participated in camp the next year. Right. So it, it's a risk. And I tell them it's a risk. It's up to you, but it's a risk. And yeah. So. Okay. Well, I'm learning yeah. more and more because I, I didn't know that that was a way to approach the, that you, I mean, you don't have to obviously, but that's, right. I mean, right. that's a great way to approach it. It's, it becomes a standard part of the year's tuition. This is what right. we do here. Yeah. 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 And, and obviously... And the, the activities you do are so meaningful and important that you, you want to have the students with that knowledge when they come back to their lessons. Right, right. Yeah, for mm. sure. <laughs> yeah, and parent, a lot of parents don't get it. They don't get it until they experience it. So I just make them experience it. <laughs> right, so, what, so what do you mean? You better tell us more about that. Do, do, you, do they come along and watch for a little bit every day? Or? No, until, I should say until, they're, until their kids experience it. They okay. don't understand the value of it until their kids experience it. And they're like, oh, because I share, I'll share um, pictures and videos and stuff of what we did. Um, and so when they see what their kids are doing and, and then their kids are talking about it and, and that kind of thing. Plus the friendship alone is a huge value, you know, just that in itself. The friendship that the students make. In camp, yeah. In camp, yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. For, t for teachers who are maybe starting out, you've uncovered now a potential challenge. How do you, if it's your first camp, how do you ensure the parents understand the value of what you're doing? If you haven't got videos to show them or their kids haven't connected with other students on camps before. Right. Um, make it mandatory. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I guess. That's the number one tip. Yep. No, um, do other teachers do that, or is that? Do you know? Is that is that a, a standard thing? I must say, know, I'm surprised. I didn't. I didn't know that people did that. <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> I don't know. Well, I'll tell you what. We're gonna we're gonna find out because I'm interviewing more yeah. people about this this month, so we'll find out. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, I think with teachers, I have some teachers in my um, Facebook group right now that are first timers for this, and their parents are like camp you know I don't know about this you know they're not too they're not rushing to the sign up you know r rushing to sign up or anything and so I just say if it doesn't you know do with who does sign up even if it's a small group a teacher actually shared recently in that group that she only had I think four sign up last year for the when she first did it and um because those students really talked it up for this year, everybody is like excited to do it. Yeah. So I think that's the key is just go ahead and get started with the few that you have and then, you know, get that, you know, mm. so you can take the pictures and you can do all the stuff to create the excitement. I was going to say, yeah, make sure you videotape things and, uh, right. and make the promotional material that you need to build it again next year. Yeah, it's a, that's a great, right. great tip too. Uh, okay, so we've we've decided. Oh, that's what I was going to ask you. Is it might it be a good idea? Maybe not for your first one. I guess you've talked about the finding lesson plans and then deciding what you want to do from that. I guess the mm -hmm. other option is to go. 
I really want my kids to compose. I'm going to run a composing summer camp and then find the resources for it or my theory summer camp or something. Is that another approach? Yes. A uh, matter of fact, I, I actually go through that in my premium course is I go through exactly how I took a book, uh, a resource that you can just buy, um, a composition workbook, for example. Um, that, that's not what I did my uh, example on, but say like I, you know, I bought this composition workbook from FJH or whatever, you know, it doesn't matter what it is. Um, I can take that and create a lesson plan based off of that workbook. And right. I've done that before. So it's definitely doable. You just kind of split it up into different, you know, chapters and how you want to approach it and activities to do with it. Yep. Cool. It's definitely impossible. All right. So let's talk about ages and groups then. How does that work? Okay. So I found <laughs> and abilities. that. Yeah. 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 To have all sorts of levels, all sorts of ages. I found that the similar to divide them into similar ages is my first preference, and then my second preference is mixed ages, and the last is to go by levels. And the reason why is because technically you can have a 14-year-old beginner. If you're going to do like beginners, you could have a 14-year-old and an eight-year-old in the same group, mm. and that would be awkward, you know, mm. or he could be with a bunch of seven and eight year olds, you know? So I think it's best to divide it by ages and then, or mixed. Okay. Um, then, uh, I'll give you an example. Last year I did a camp that was based more on technique and performance. And so that particular one I wanted to do, um, age based, because I could work a little bit differently than with the older kids than I would work with the younger kids. But the levels, it didn't matter where they were okay. as far as they were. Um, where this year, I'm our focus is on learning about music and the movies. Oh, yeah, cool. And, yeah, it's going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be good. <laughs> and, and I don't need a specific age or level or anything like that because the topic doesn't need, you know. I, matter of fact, it will be more fun to have different ages in, in the groups. So it will really depend on your focus of the camp of how, how you want to divide it. Okay, but the, the, the best way you've seen is for by age probably because I guess it, yeah. it helps. I mean, you want to hang out with people your own age, don't you? Right, right. As you say, you don't Except want to... teenagers. <laughs> yeah, that's right, that's right. But yeah. if, if that's a huge bonus for your students and that's going to want them to make them come again next year and bring friends or whatever it is, then that's what right. you want, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you've got, you've got some idea of what you want to do. You've worked out how you're going to group it. You've started talking to the parents about it. You've handed out, the, I assume it's a form that they sign. Is it? Is that how you... Uh, what, what, how do you actually get the parents... Yeah, I I do my registration on Google Drive. It's just a Google form that okay. they fill out. Yep, mm -hmm. great. So they type in their details. Um, and do you charge? How do you charge it? Do you just keep your monthly charge going as if it were all through the holidays? Yeah, they can pay um, it as one full thing because it's two months worth of lessons is what it is. Yep. So they could pay it in one big chunk Batch, yep. or I allow them to also do two payments. So, okay. Cause you have, I have a couple of families that have four kids in the class and that's, that's a lot. <laughs> so yeah. After, you know, times that by two and yeah. It, so I work with them. Yeah. I could imagine. Yeah. You'd be reasonable, yeah. obviously. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. <laughs> so, um, all right. So we've got that now. What about, um, the times during the day? Have you found a good times at work? Morning, afternoon, night? I don't know. That's a good question. What I've done is I've given different options. So for my camp this year, I've done three different options I can choose from. One of the options is before most of them even get out of school. And they it's an afternoon and evening option. And those are that's the option. The first one I always have early because of those families that want to just get out of town for the summer. Um, I have a couple oh, so, of families. Sorry, do you mean just, you start this camp before school even finishes? Yeah, my oh, first okay. session. You know, my first session is in May, um, or about the mid May before a lot of them are even out of school. Okay. And I, yeah, I do that because um, I wanted a no excuses session. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. So if they do want to go away for two months. Right. Right. No okay. excuses. 
You could okay. take this one. <laughs> so that, that one's an afternoon evening, and that actually ends up being a, a popular one. Right. And then the next one um, is a, a tighter time frame. So they come for two days for four hours each day. So it's just a quick, sort you know, we want to get this done. Or something? Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. And then the last one is a morning option. Okay. So they have different options to... And is it the same content at each of those? So if your theme is technique, they're all the same content, you just choose which session you want to attend. Is that right? Right, right. Got mm -hmm. it. Yeah, that's that's a good way to think about it. I mean, it, it's more time for you and you're repeating the same content, but it means that everyone has an option to go to. Right, that right. That suits them. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. This is good. I think we're, I'm, I'm, I'm understanding how this all works much better. Because, I mean, I should put up my hand and say to everyone, I think I mentioned it in my, my blog post about this month. I've never done this before. This is all new to me. Um, and it will be to a lot of Australians and probably my English audience as well because it isn't such a thing to do over here. Okay. Normally yeah. we all just go and surf for a month. And that's kind of what happens. <laughs> so, but I can absolutely see the value. And I think other people have talked to me about the value in in just the continuity of p keeping students playing piano instead of having right. them just drop off for a month or two. And we all know yeah. that that happens. Yeah, yeah. But I imagine that's, I mean, that still happens if students choose your first session, they could easily right. not they're going to have months. a break. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, can only, you can only do your best, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, have a, I have a solution for that too. <laughs> oh, do you? Oh, go on. You might as well tell us now. <laughs> That's nothing to do with camp, but no, I actually have, I give them a summer project. It's called a summer practice prop project. Practice and um, prop project, prop, P-R-O-P, prop, yep. because they're actually making a, kind of think of a science fair project, you know, um, where they, anything goes, they can do a drawing, they can do a painting, they can build Lego, uh, Lego project, anything that has to represent their practicing. So, for example, if they practice for 30 minutes, they can apply 30 minutes to their project. Or if their goal was to play through a section three times in a row um, correctly, they can add three sections to their project. So okay. everything has to be applied to their project. And then when they come in the fall, when uh, lessons return, it, we have a fall kickoff, which we're showcasing our projects and how it related to their practicing. So wow. That's it great. encourages the, yeah. <laughs> That's cool. Do they choose their own project? Uh-huh, yeah. Wow, yep. there you go. It's and the project might not be music related, is that right? doesn't have to be music related now right. although i have had some you know that will do a composition or you know things like that but Good yeah it's fun. this is why i love talking to you and i love reading your <laughs> post because you are so creative <laughs> with ideas so everyone make sure you jump on jennifer's website musiceducatorresources.com that's the kind of stuff you're going to find there okay let's get back to things um tell me about food do you do you feed your students yeah, I have snacks, and that's one thing that you want to make sure is there's no allergies. Um, with my current students, I already know if anybody has allergies because they're my students, um, and that's something I asked for already. But it's always good to have it in your form, again, just because things change. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, luckily, I don't have any students that have any allergies, so I don't have to worry about that. But if, if there is, you just you know need to know about it beforehand. But with food um, comes expenses. Mm, mm. <laughs> so you want to make sure that you do charge some kind of little fee that covers things like that, like food and, and anything else that you're using. Um, the, but you don't have to do food. You could even, uh, depending on how long the camp is, you do need to have those little breaks, you know, yeah. like that. But you could always have them bring in something from home. Mm. You've just made me um, think about too, how many kids in average are in a group on your camp? My, my groups are typically about eight kids. Okay. So if everyone one year decides to do the in-school session camp and no one's <laughs> left for the other one, do you kind of encourage them to, to spread it out? That's actually a good question. I tell them to give me their uh, order of preference. Okay. So they have to give me first, second, and third choice. But occasionally, I'll say, uh, get a parent that will type and say, "This is the only one that will work for me," and th that's fine usually because I've never had anybody. All of them say that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> That's great. So, I, I wonder, do you have the, the sign up, a copy of the sign up form that you use? Is that in your course? That sounds like a really crucial bonus or something. Yeah, I think I gave, yeah, I did give uh, some samples of different ways I've done it over the years. Fantastic. Okay. So there's a couple different examples. Great. Uh, okay, let's. I'm just going through my questions here. Um, all right, let's talk about activities then that you do now. This is. I now know that this is going to be related to the the theme. A theming is theming a good idea. Yes. Uh, yeah. I love. This. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> let's. Talk, can you actually just talk before we go on about some of the some of the either the themes or the uh, you know the content that you've chosen to do just in the last couple of years? You've you've mentioned technique. Um, I've actually you done, uh, you were about to say practice, so, and I yeah. actually have done a practice, uh, practice makes, it's, it was called, practice makes perfect, or does it? Okay. And so, and that's what we learned, is, yeah. you know, all about practicing and creative ways they can practice and different things like that. I really, I've actually done that camp several times, because I like to repeat that one. Well, it's a good Because, you know, new one students one. come in, right, yeah. yeah, it's a good one to do. And you said um, film? Blues, yeah. yeah, we're going to do film and music or, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, film music. <laughs> um, last year was technique and performance. Um, I've done blues improvisation. That's always fun. Um, uh, I did a couple, every, every four years I do a piano Olympics. And mm -hmm. so in the summer, it's perfect for an Olympic themed camp, you know, to do that. So, yeah, yeah. But pretty much anything goes <laughs> mm. and in fact on my um on my last blog post I, I i gave one of the links i gave uh was to 100 camp themes um so yes. we'll put the link we'll put the link to that um in uh, in the show notes again today uh okay so act, let's talk about activities now um as you say they're going to vary a little bit but i i i wonder if you've got some standard ones okay well camps are a great time to play games and activities so there's different things like relay races are fun if you're going to do an outdoor thing. Um, game show style games work really well. Uh, water games are fun yeah, <laughs> if, if it's, it's if that it's time warm. of year. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Target games are really fun, especially for boys. They like you know shooting at something. Or I used a catapult uh, actually one of my group lessons that was a real hit and that could be used in camp too. So yeah, yeah. That's fun. Um, Card games, board games, you know, different things like that. Um, the great thing also to, to think about is uh, when you think of activities and themes and things like that, is it's the perfect time to learn a new skill or strengthen weaknesses. It, um, camp is a good time for that. So it doesn't necessarily have to be sitting at a piano the whole time. Sometimes you don't even use the piano, just depending on the focus of your camp. Yeah, I think that's the important thing I've just picked up. Every one of those ideas you mentioned were actually nothing to do with music uh, yeah. and nothing to do with the piano. But that's, you know, the, the point of a camp is that it's a bit different, it's a bit fun, uh, or it should be lots of fun, and the kids are having fun together. And, and so just these kind of standard camp games will work really right. well. Yeah. Right. Is there a good resource for them online? Do you know? Or just Google uh, them? or The games, yeah, they're all pretty much all over the place. Um, Summer camp I, games you could search for or right. something like that. Yeah. yeah, music games. Yeah. 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 And I like the fact that, yeah, it's not all about music, but obviously <laughs> there will be plenty of elements to do with it, but you don't have right. to do everything music. Like, so right. don't, I'm assuming a good instruction for new teachers would be don't get all the kids there and then sit down at the piano. Yeah, yeah. Play exactly. some games, let them get to know each other, all that kind of fun stuff first. Yeah, get off yeah. the bench. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Cool. Yep. All right. So, look, um, what's it going to cost? Do you think? Do you, do you um, do you need some upfront funds to be able to kind of set this this thing up, or, or do you find that once you put the forms out there and the parents pay, then you've got the money you need to you know buy resources or hire a venue or whatever it is? Mm -hmm. um, well, as a teacher, your cost should really only be. Uh, whatever you're investing in as a training resource or lessons plans that you've purchased. As far as specifically for the camp, any materials that you're going to use, um, games that you might buy, uh, things like that should come out of a materials fee that you would charge. So initially, you are going to need a front, you know, whatever you need, any of your games and activities stuff. 
or materials that you need to buy. You're going to have to front that, but you're going to hopefully get that back with the material fees. Got it. Yeah, cool. Okay, um, so any, I know this is a boring kind of part of things, do we need to consider any legal kind of things? Mm -hmm. There's probably three things that you want to think about. First is licensing to see if you need a special license. Some, and that really, really, will, okay. <laughs> <laughs> that, that will depend on where you live. So you just need to research that and see if that's a necessary thing or not. It might not be. Um, and then liability, you know, do you have liability insurance? That things, especially with a camp or group situation, you definitely want to look into something like that so you're covered. But you also want to consider having a waiver as well, just saying that you can't guarantee an injury-free experience, that you're not responsible if somebody gets hurt. And also that a waiver is good for food allergies, um, spe any special needs that need to be considered, photo releases, Yep. Things like that, any media type release. Um, I would say those are the three things that you need to think okay. about. Great. Um, all right. So I was going to I'm going to ask a question about the, the kind of impact that this can have on your um, annual income. I guess from your perspective, at least, the benefit is that you're not losing any income over the holiday right. periods. So it helps you maintain a consistency. Um, and I have a feeling that I've got a few people lined up who run pretty sizable camps and it would have a, a, you know, it depends on the size of the operation you run and all that kind of stuff. But I think for teachers just getting started, your concept of just maintaining your income is probably a good approach and a good reason for yeah. doing it. That's the first goal is to maintain. The second goal is to make a little bit more on top of that. Yeah. So. <laughs> Great. Cool. Okay. So let's, let's start wrapping it up. Can you give us, give us your top three tips? For running your first successful summer camp okay first is over prepare okay <laughs> prepare more than you think you have time for because you just don't know depending on the dynamic of the group how quick you're going to get through things some groups i notice i can get through everything no problem and other groups i don't get through enough and other groups i need that extra something so kind of prepare for all all of it. And have um, too much material, perhaps. Too much material, yeah. yeah. And then second, don't stress. Just enjoy the experience because you're going to learn as you go. It's just experience. And so learn for those experiences. <laughs> yeah. And the third, I would say, is don't give up. If parents didn't jump in and get excited about it the first time, don't say, oh, it's never going to work. Mm. So just try it again and keep trying until and as it works. You say, but you know you've got to start somewhere if there's four kids on the first one who have an amazing time right there'll be 24 kids on the next one once they've told all their friends about it and things so yeah right yeah it's a really that was a really good summary of, of what we've talked about jennifer i love that okay so let's wrap it up by talking about your your training course because um obviously a lot of the things we've been talking about you go into much more detail about on this course and as i mentioned right at the start this course, which is called Make More, Teach Less, um, is the sponsor for this month on the podcast. So just give us a little bit more detail. I gave it a quick summary at the start, but the, the kind of things that teachers can get out of this in addition to what they've learned today. Okay. Um, well, the big thing is there's a lot of things to consider when running a camp, which is why I decided to do the course in the begin with, because I would have loved to have it when I was starting out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so I go through pretty much everything we talked about here, but in much more detail. Um, I everything how to kind of visualize what it is, is it's a video course that's divided into small smaller modules so think of it like if you're reading a book and you're the book's divided into chapters so it's thinking it's divided that way so you don't have to go in and watch the whole thing in one sitting we're all busy yeah. so a lot some of these modules are just five minutes and some of them might be 10 or 15 it just depends on what the subject is yeah that's but great you, you can do it as you can do it <laughs> yeah yeah and it saves where you are so you can mark that you completed that particular module and then you know where to start from on the next time you log in. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. Yeah. So that works out really well. Yeah. And as so I said, yeah, you've got a whole lot of bonuses too. So, mm -hmm. you know, you've actually got some lesson plans and things, haven't you? Yeah. And I include also a template so they, they can use uh, to create their own lesson plan if, if they want to kind of an outline of, you know, how to do it. Yeah. 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 
It's great. And, and as yeah. I say, those do's and don'ts and, and instructions like that are just so valuable. <laughs> so you don't, you know, so the first one is a winner. You know, we, we want, I want all my teachers who are watching to have a win on this if they try it out for the first time. And, mm-hmm. you know, your courses will be a great help. So um, for those who are interested, you're giving us uh, a little discount this um, month. It's 10% off, I believe. Is that right? Yep. Yep. So 10% yep. off the premium course uh, right. through the month of April. And the code, you can find all the details about that at timtopham.com forward slash summer dash camp, summer camp. Fantastic. All right. So is there anything we've kind of missed, crucial information that we forgot to talk about today? Um, I think kind of, if I could just close with like a little story about yeah, how camps uh, create friendships and how important those friendships are. I have two, two short stories. One is I have two boys who have been with me since they were eight years old and they are now 15. And so they've grown up with the camps and the group lessons and all that kind of stuff together. And I tell you, it is so, f- they wouldn't know each other otherwise if it hadn't been that they're both taking lessons from me and it's been so fun to see their friendship their bond and <laughs> they're they now have I mean they're 15 years old and now they have sleepovers with each other and they go to their houses all the time and I, that wouldn't have been possible what it not the group of things that we do in the mm. studio and then the other um, example I wanted to give was on a particular student of mine who really struggles in making friends at school. He's a little quirky and just has some challenges. And so he, he his mom tells me often how school's really hard for him. He doesn't have a lot of friends. And I was able to witness him just having a blast with these other boys at piano camp. And I just sat there watching them going, oh, If his mother could see this, she would be like so excited. And so I texted her that night and said, you know, your your son may struggle with friends at school, but I want you to know he has friends at piano. And so I just think doing camps and, and group lessons and stuff like that just makes it so worth it just in friendship alone. It's fantastic. Oh, be- what a beautiful story to finish with. We almost should have started with that, Jennifer. That's, that's so great. And, and I think that is it's a crucial thing. I was talking in podcast, um, I think it was 34, uh, with Laura Kahar about building a piano community and the way she really works on community with her group, the group lessons that she runs, um, and it being just so, so important, regardless of any other benefit, the mm-hmm. fact that these kids aren't you know, just crossing over and not even talking to each other as they move out of the lesson and come into the next one. Um, right. they're, they're getting to know each other. They're getting friends. And, you know, we all know that community is so crucial. So I think it's a great way to finish up. Thank you so much for your time. I've been wanting to get you on the podcast for so long. And it just, it was great that you brought out this course exactly when I wanted to do some information about summer camp. So thank you. Yeah, yeah. And so sorry we couldn't meet up at the MTNA this year another time. I look forward to meeting you in person finally. Definitely. <laughs> cool. Now, look, I do want to apologize. We had a, a bit of a, a, a mix up with the, we lost our Skype connection before. And I'm not sure if the video has worked in this little second, last 10 minutes or so. So viewers, if you've lost Jennifer, I do apologize. You can see me instead. Um, sorry about that. <laughs> um, but hopefully the audio has worked beautifully. Um, that's it. I think we'll finish up there. So show notes again at timtopham.com forward slash episode 38. And Jennifer, until next time, uh, thank you very much for your help. Uh, are you happy if, if I get some questions on the show notes page just to shoot them through to you? Sure. Yeah, yeah. that'd be great. Um, and for those of you who are members of my inner circle community, Jennifer is one of my experts in there uh, and she has been providing lots of information. So um, if you are a member, you can connect with Jennifer directly and just y- you get all the information from her through that way as well. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Farewell, and uh, we'll speak to you soon. All right. Thanks. Uh, Bye-bye. Bye. If the idea of a piano teacher's community where you get to access the best educational resources, rub shoulders with expert teachers from around the world, and have immediate access to feedback for any of your questions, then Inner Circle membership is for you. The Inner Circle is my private community of piano teachers from across the globe who share a commitment to creating and delivering the most inspiring, modern, and progressive learning experiences for their students. Membership is now open, so head to timtopham.com forward slash community to find out more and get involved today. I can't wait to see you on the inside.